me when I lie. The infection video <laughs> isn't ready. I'm sorry, my spiderlings. I am overthinking it. You read the title, though. Today we are redesigning some horse royalty. While I love their flowy hair and, you know, their pony princesses that's sick, they never felt regal enough to me. We're supposed to believe that they're all powerful rulers until they aren't. I can protect my subjects from you. Thanks, dude. Real helpful. Plot hole aside, considering the ruler of your fantasy horse land should probably be powerful, let's focus on the designs because I am simply just a little guy with access to Ibis paint. Okay, so you think as someone that formed their life in art off of drawing horses that a video about horses wouldn't give me so much trouble from the word action, but here we are, I guess. Please ignore the war on horse anatomy that is about to take place before you. Don't look at it. Please don't. Please don't look at it. Celestia's design screams, BUY OUR TOYS! More than ruler of a kingdom, down to the fact that her title is princess and not queen, due to queens being portrayed as evil and princesses good, as always, blame Disney. So, that's the first thing we're changing. Princess Celestia is not a princess, but a queen. It changes literally nothing narrative-wise and fixes that weird lack of a queen except for Chrysalis problem. You'll notice I gave them both tales reminiscent more of traditional mythological unicorn tales. I feel like that makes them look more regal, but it's also something that sets unicorns and alicorns apart. If I end up redesigning more ponies, which, by the way, if you had suggestions for which ones you want to see next, leave them in the comments, please, pretty please, I'd give them a regular tale seen in the series proper. We'll get there. Probably. In her design, I wanted to make her far more deity-esque, considering that she's kind of immortal and all that jazz. So I took inspiration from uh, Seraphims and their multiple wings and gave Celestia another pair. I think it suits her and sets her apart from every pony else. I kept her general proportions, though, because the princesses having different builds is very visually appealing, and I'm kind of sad that every other pony is cut from the same mold. Again, screams, buy our toys, and again, we'll get there, I think. Um, yes, tangent, for those that love horse lore as much as much as I do. Okay, so before I actually, like, talk about her hair, you know, like, the, the design things that are important to this video, mm -hmm. you know how it's a popular headcanon that Celestia had purely pink hair before vanishing um, Nightmare Moon with the Elements of Harmony, like in Lullaby for a Princess? Yeah, that's, that's, um, that's just, like, real here. <laughs> She got all sunrisey when she um, absorbed all the magic in Junk. I love that episode in canon for actually giving us how it happened, but come on! Why do they both look like how they do in the present, other than to not clue in Twilight on the fact that this is a flashback and not present day? But then again, they can still just make it to where Twilight is confused as to why Celestia and by extension Luna look a little different. Also, the fight scene takes place at a place that Twilight has actually been to you know like multiple times the castle of the two sisters you know where they defeated nightmare moon in the season one premiere yeah yeah that one that <laughs> that being mixed with the fact that it wasn't all worn down is telling enough just lean into it come on hasbro you know you want to please P please <laughs> pretty please oh right <clears throat> i have to talk about the hair still did I, uh, I, I did, I did say I was gonna do that. I wanted to make it more wispy, like sweeping clouds across the sunrise. I modeled how I rendered it after the way background clouds are sometimes stylized in the show. I think that would be really pretty if she looked like the sky. It certainly stand out among others, like unlike in the original design, it doesn't really look like much of anything. Sure, her hair has like batteries or something, but again, it was made with the intention to turn her into a toy as easily as possible. Neat! Hasbro? Random colors! Thanks! What does that have to do with being sunbutt? The main thing that bothers me about Celestia's design though is that even though she's responsible for raising and lowering the sun, her design, aside from cutie mark, does not reflect that she is a creature of daylight quite like Luna does with the night. More proof that Luna is best princess. But uh, yeah, I'm scrapping her main colors into the abyss. Goodbye. Instead, I went for a sunrise look considering that she raises the sun and stuff. 
There's so much potential there with making her look really pretty with warm colors and soft golds to remind the viewer of the warmth of sunshine hitting your face. I feel like that makes her look more regal too, like instead of the stark stripes of color you have a nice gradient, wow! I edited her jewelry a bit also, I- <laughs> whoops, I forgot to talk about that. Um, but it's there. No, it's there. The purple in her original design comes kind of out of left field, as it's nowhere else but on the crown and Celestia's fork? Ne necklace? Patrol? Bib? I don't know, that thing. Anyways, here she is, Queen Celestia, ruler of Equestria. She really has some alliteration going on in here, damn. Best princess time. Hehe. <laughs> Ever since I was a kid, there was always something about Luna that drew me to her. Luna has been, is, and will always be my favorite My Little Pony Princess. Sorry, Big Mac. Just the way that she carries herself, her backstory, her sharp contrast in color, and by extension just the way she speaks alone. Allow me to demonstrate. We have raced your tiny village with our presence so that you might behold the real princess of the night! <laughs> Luna, no pony has spoken like that in a thousand years. And might one presume thou hast nothing to do with such coincidences cometh to such gaps in time, dearest sister? Again, as I said with Celestia, the goal with these designs is to push their day-night motifs harder. But while Celestia kind of fails at that in her original design, Luna does a fantastic job. Out of the four princesses, she's the one with the strongest design. However, I knew that there's always things that I could change, so I went in and made a few key changes. First, you'll notice that I curved her horn. I opted for this instead of giving her a crown, because in the wise words of Lucky Inkyo, You know, you don't have to be wearing a crown. To be a princess. Instead, I thought giving her a crescent-like horn would make her look even more like the moon, which is never a bad thing. She is moon princess. Secondly, I wanted to keep the level of sparkle that she has in her design in the original franchise. I feel like that set her apart from Celestia, where it was less exaggerated, and I wanted to keep that here. I also like the little glow that she has in the original, so I kept that to a degree, but I adjusted it to be less of a hard line because I don't have to animate this and therefore I can do as I please. And lastly, I wanted to give her a little bit more of a diverse color palette, so I made some parts of her coat a cyan color to counter the darkness of her cutie mark and parts of her galaxy-like hair. And now that I've talked about the design, it's tangent time! I will now share some miscellaneous thoughts about Nighttime Horse with you all. Enjoy! Number one. Now that I'm thinking about it, there are a lot of kind of odd inconsistencies around Luna in the show. For one, her hair in the pilot, as far as I can remember, is literally never seen again outside of literal animation errors. If I were to go in and design younger versions of the sisters, I'd probably keep that. It'd have like an interesting magic reason, I bet. I always liked seeing that in fan works over the years. Second weird thing. Number two, the bat ponies. Don't get me wrong, I love bat ponies. I think they're really sick. My Sona, like my YouTube Sona's pony version, is a bat pony. I just wish we got more lore for them, that's all. Number three. Um, this is like my Roman Empire and also kind of about Celestia. Bear with me. There's this one episode where Starlight Glimmer goes to Canterlot to help Celestia and Luna work out some communication issues, and she ends up swapping their cutie marks in order for them to walk a day in each other's shoes, so to speak. Um, <laughs> funny, because they're like one of the only, they're like two of the only ones that wear shoes. Shrug. When Starlight casts the spell, Luna's ink mark thing goes with it. Is it part of her cutie mark? Great question, dear viewer. No, it's just. It just retcons the season 4 finale. Which is it, Hasbro? Anyways, um, in my heart, she got it from being corrupted as Nightmare Moon. That's far more interesting than putting it on Sun, but I put Leonard on the Kini Marts on, in my version, so that won't happen. 2020 vision, guys. You will absolutely never believe this, but I am running out of things to talk about, and so I am going to talk about my Lullaby for a Princess again. I was in an elementary school when that video came out, and I still think about it like once a day, and I'm barely exaggerating. 
Lullaby for a Princess is part of why I pursued animation in the first place. It's kind of the whole, if they can do it, surely I can get there one day too thing. And as much as I make fun of My Little Pony for some of the silly things it does, it's genuinely so near and dear to my heart. And all of the fan works have for sure shaped my art and how it is today. Anyways, go watch it if you've never seen it. Lullaby for a Princess, I mean. Um, it's so amazing. Thank you to Ponyphonic and Warp Out for the food. In fact, when I go to upload this, I'm probably gonna go watch it while I wait for this to, like, process, because YouTube. Yippee, yahoo, etc. Okay, I'm done rambling now. Here she is, the princess of the night. Here they both are, and here they are next to their canon designs as well. What do you think? Would you watch a version of My Little Pony where they looked like this? Would the animators hate me? That's not a question for you, I already know the answer. Absolutely. Thank you for tuning into this video. If you want to see more My Little Pony stuff, a bunch of my friends also upload MLP content. From Equestria Girls to MLP Infection EUs to Generation 3 designs, I've linked all of those videos down below. You should totally go check them out if this video was your cup of tea. That's all for me today. Take care of yourselves, my spiderlings, and I will return to you all soon. See you next time.